Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to Overanalyzed, our awesome Overwatch community coaching series. And today we're going to take a look at a DPS player, but I'm going to show you how to actually properly select targets because this player is really suffering from just going in on the wrong target. And remember guys, if you would like to send a video clip in for consideration to appear on this show, then go to the link in the video description below or um, just go to unitloss.com forward slash overanalyzed and you do have the chance of getting coaching with me. And remember, every time the game updates, I, I lose all of the replays. So keep sending those replays in. I didn't realize there was like a little hut here. <laughs> what is this? Is there something inside it? No, there's nothing inside it. Actually, it looks so cool, doesn't it, Nepal, from this this sort of view. The way it's stacked up, the way you've got village at the bottom, uh, shrine up there, and then I've... Is this shrine? You know, I always forget the name of these. I think this is shrine, right? Sanctum, yeah. Sanctum's at the top <laughs> and shrine's at the bottom. So cool. Anyway, let's get stuck into this. So the actual uh, email says this. This was a game where I felt I made a large contribution to the team and still lost. Now get this. I had 20k damage per 10 minutes for a total of 18,000 damage in the entire game. I was hoping to get some insight on where I can improve. All right. So this is this is actually kind of mental, right? 18,000 damage. Now, I believe this player is Tracer. Uh, so it's this one. And it's Tracer and Soldier 76. But I believe it starts off as Tracer from what I'm led to believe here. But we'll see what happens. Uh, and this is a platinum rated game. But remember, guys, 20,000 damage. I mean, that's insane. That's like... Massive. That's actually massive amounts of damage. So if you're doing that much damage, we've got to be securing the kills. And that's going to be the problem here. Almost certainly. It's, yeah, so I guess we're going to swap now to Tracer. Yeah, all right. Okay, cool. So let's see what happens here. So obviously we're going into a Brig. And remember, this is the newer style overanalyze where we do go into a lot more detail um, than we did in the previous ones. All right, so I'm, I'm loving this. Ooh. Okay, all right, let's go back and let's be ultra harsh. Could we have killed this ball? I think we could have killed this ball. Um, we got this ball down super low and we should have carried on chasing him and killed him. So let's just watch this as it plays out again. So the ball is feeding on the enemy team. So there's a few things to, to look for here, right? So let's take a look at our team composition. So we are Tracer. We don't really have anybody who can heal us on our team. So that's a problem for us, but it's not really that much of an issue, right? Tracer can obviously heal herself with recall, and she should be looking to utilize all of the health packs. Very similar to Ball. I mean, Ball is going to be looking to utilize the health packs. But the enemy team have got a Zen. Now, if we had a Zen, that would be a little bit better for us, because Zen could obviously heal us at range effectively. Or if we had an Ana or whatever, that could fire us from range to heal us. The fact is, our two supports cannot support us. So, we need to be aware of that straight away. We're on our own. We need to play... I mean, I want to not really play defensively, but we need to be aware that we are looking to play on health packs and we are looking to utilize our rewind in the correct manner but we'll get onto that when there's examples to show it off so this ball comes straight into the enemy team uh, into our team here our thoughts here should not be running away to the side it should be i'm gonna run at this ball and destroy him look at this our team are firing and we're missing a bunch of shots whatever but we do sort of get the message here and we're like okay i'm gonna go in on this ball because let's just be real here as well one thing which is like think of, i'm gonna make a statement right if Ball hits us there straight away, so if Ball can slam us here, our entire team, which is crazy from Ball, it's really bad play because he, he doesn't know what's here. We could have stunned him up and destroyed him. If he does that, he's going to be miles ahead of his team. So it's completely fine for us to blink straight forward through here and chase him down. It's going to be very unlikely that the rest of his team is going to be here to, to, to basically push us and do damage to us. So look at this. We're firing. I'm going to get back on board with you here. So you are F9. Melee. Where is the melee? It's the big thing that he's missing here. You should be meleeing. He is dead. We don't melee him. Look, we reload. But I don't know what we're doing. Like, the, the very... When Trace is reloading, like, okay. It, this is really, really hard for me, again, to... Uh, it's easy for me... So, okay. <laughs> Let me just paraphrase this. So, it's very easy for me to go, all right, Tracer should be doing full damage. Like, you unload all your clip, and then you blink forward and melee to get the finishing kill. That extra damage from the melee, because you're going to do 25 damage when you do melee, uh, is actually quite a lot, right? Against Ball there, it would have killed him because Ball had no HP, would have literally died. But knowing when to do it in actual live play, because if we just go back again and we jump back on board with you and we just play this live, 
it's easy to say it in slow motion. It's one of those things that you'll just get used to the more you play Tracer. But as you're firing at someone, and then you go for a reload, just go for a melee. Yeah, it's going to reset your reload animation, but it doesn't matter because that extra 25 damage might be enough to kill a target. So look at this. He comes in. We're just going to go on him. We didn't need to back off there. We're just going to chase him down. we blink melee. And he's dead. He doesn't get that health. And now it's a 5v6. And we almost certainly win this, right? Now he runs away and we just sort of leave him. It's like, okay. Now I'm not fussed that you've left him. It's whatever. It's fine. Let's go and see what we do now as we try to fight back on the point. Our 12 gets a kill. Ball comes back. E okay. Gets away. We need to be careful of this. Oh, we can pressure him. So again, like one of the things with Tracer, it's very some. In fact, let me just turn this off. Cannot wait for the replay viewer to update and we get rid of it because I always think it's off and it's not. Now it is. Um, one of the things with Tracer is looking for windows of opportunity to engage targets. So the Roadhog opportunity is if he's used Hook, then we can go on Hog. Because if Hog hooks us, we're dead. But if he hasn't got Hook available, it doesn't matter. We can literally charge our ulti off him and just use him like a big fat battery. Things like McCree Flashbang as well. Things like this here, right? So this Trace has just used her Rewind so we can get super aggressive on her. I mean, she's feeding because she's just gone straight into our team. But again, that's another Go symbol, right? Whoever's got the recoil in the uh, the recoil in the back pocket, it's sort of got the advantage in the Tracer Jewel. All right, so a bit of a cheeky frontline double bling. Right then, let's think about what we're doing here now. So we haven't really spoke too much about target priority at the moment, simply because it's just been Ball who's been feeding into us and we've killed the Ball and then there's just been uh, sort of the dregs of the enemy team as we're working on and, and killing them as they're in our face, which is totally fine. Now though, however, there's a completely different picture emerging because let's slow this down. The picture that's emerging here is they're aggressing onto our front line. Uh, Winston has gone in kind of a bit mad there. He does have a bubble, but he's going to find it hard to get out because he jumped in. So I... Okay... No, oh, no, he's jumping out. That should kill him, actually, Bomb. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Um, one thing I was going to highlight there is... Oh, is it fine, actually? I don't know. In fact, I'm just going to highlight this because I think we need to be aware of this. So think about setup position, right? Our position here before this fight began is we're, we're sitting here. We, we blinked in, did a bit of damage to the Reinhardt. We rewound out, and then we're sort of here, and then we're firing at the front line. We're messing about. We come in and we throw a uh, pulse bomb onto the Reinhardt, which kills him, which isn't bad, right? However, consider this. Imagine if we were set up here on the flanks, right? We're waiting to go, right? We could be standing here. We're waiting to go. We're waiting to go. We look at these guys. We're going to maybe blink in, triple blink. We could even triple blink in, pulse bomb one of them, and get the hell out of there. Now, of course, they do have a Batiste who could use Immortality Field, which obviously would prevent any damage from the... Uh, well, it wouldn't prevent any damage, but it would prevent um, you getting the killing blow. But... It kind of wouldn't matter, right? Because you'd then be in the back line. And this is where Tracer is super effective when an enemy team is pushing like this. You don't want to be on the front line. You want to be in their back line. And to be in their back line, you need to set up getting ready to get into the back line, not chilling sort of on the front line as you were, which just isn't really getting us the maximum value, which might actually be the theme of this. We want to press that Tracer. Where is she? Okay. So she's rewound again. It's fine. We can keep going after her. We should be able to get the kill. Great. Good play. Good play. Okay, uh, yeah, and we're just getting super aggressive, our team, that's fine. But now, you, okay, use this time to think about where do you want to be? Where do you want to set up? Are we just going to keep walking forward to the enemy team here? Ah, I mean, that's okay. That's free damage we got out of there. We're lucky we didn't get stunned by their brig and killed and whatever, but it's fine. I don't mind it. Like, it's so, it's such a fast maneuver from us. It's, it's cool. So get onto the flanks here. Like, again, chilling. Like, Trace is about to come. We see Trace is about to come. We know Hook's down. Trace is coming in on the flank. I take this Tracer Jewel again. But again, we're... Okay, so we've got... This is a major problem here. Let, let's just let this play through. So we are just... I'll bring... I'll rewind this in a second because there's a lot going on. But it's a lot of nothing. And this could be a lot more effective. Hmm. Oh, Okay. 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 <laughs> it's going on a long time. So it's actually working out all right for us here. Okay, let's go back. So this is a lot of missed opportunities here in this, right? So we're going to go back here. And I'm going to slow this down and well, speed this up until we get to the point we want to be at. All right, then. So let's go into a little bit of what I would want you to do in all of this phase. Because a lot is going on with Tracer Play. So... We're focusing here on the front line. We're firing into his barrier. It does nothing. It's actually That there is actually pointless. All we're doing is telling that Roadhog where we are. Roadhog then comes at us. We blink to the side. We're trying to bait Hook out. Comes in with Hook. Good reactions of us. Now let's pause this. So he now is not a threat to us. Unless 
he lands us with a massively super clutch um, alternate fire and it explodes on our head and kills us. The main target for us here, it's over there. It's that. It's this tracer. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna throw this out there, right? Overwatch players don't read the enemy team enough. And I'm not talking about what heroes are playing. I'm I'm talking about just the actual player. You have beat this person in a duel. In fact, you've beat them twice almost. Uh, okay, there's been additional damage from your team, but you have killed this tracer quite a bit. So think of it this way, right? You're you're a better tracer. We know you're a better tracer than that tracer. So our primary target here is, you know what? I don't care. I'm going to take this duel because we know this hog can't really stay here and he wants to join the fight over there with his team. I don't care. We're going to 1v1 this tracer and we're going to kill her. That's the play. That's what I want to do. So look at Hog, right? Hog's thinking, I'm out of here. It's like, whatever. You back off with a blink. And now this is... Look, we look at this Tracer. We know she's coming in. Look, she's coming close to us. Our Torb is there with us. And yet we completely ignore that. Now, let's pause this. Look at this here. This is way out of position. This Tracer is our primary target. Look, our Torb's even there. We go in on this Tracer. Cause her to use Recall, maybe. Or we just kill her. I think Torb... Does Torb kill her? I think Torb might kill her. No. So she gets away. But can you see what's happening here, right? Now look into the main fight here. We're just on the front line. Look, look at where we are. Look at what we're doing. Do you see how mental this is? Even though you've done an incredible amount of damage, this isn't effective damage. It isn't... I mean, this doesn't add up to the damage anyway because we're firing into a barrier. But the point I'm trying to make is you're doing a lot of damage into the tanks. That's just getting healed up. Again, consider this. Imagine if we're on this flank here. And imagine if we're coming in harassing these guys. Provided we don't get too close to this dude, we're not going to die straight away. And if we're harassing this guy, he's not healing his team. And, he might, and he's going to have to use his immortality field to keep him alive. Or, or, like, does he throw it on his team? Does he throw it on himself? He's got a lot of decisions to make. So, again, as we play this, looking from the overhead view, Briggs doing the right thing, pushing you away. Nice beat. Now, now, we're actually in a good position here. But this is not through our own decision making this is simply because we're running away from brick now the problem is brick's going to keep running for us so we need to get the hell out of here we can't stay here and again we just sort of farm into the back of the reinhardt drop a bomb onto him there's immortality field down okay the bomb did great damage which is cool and again we're just moving around the point here now this is where it gets really janky because we're just spraying damage into anything that's in front of us really see a bit of damage into the reinhardt we do identify that he's super low. We're going to take him out. Then we've got the Reaper. We're going to go for a bit on the Reaper. And then we sort of think, okay, I'll go on this Tracer. There's a lot of indecision. Like, you would benefit from just locking onto a target and just going in hard on that target. Now, could we have stopped Thor being killed there? I don't know. It would have been difficult. But however, if we did target that Reaper, rather than messing around, firing at the Reaper, then firing at the Tracer, maybe we would have killed him. So these are the fine margins, right? And this is how you can get a Tracer player. Or even any DPS player. It's the same for any DPS, let's be honest. When you're focusing the right target and you're securing those kills, that's what wins the game. It isn't about how much damage you do. It's about securing the kills. This is why you'll see um, Ash and McCree being favoured over a Soldier 76. Because even though over a game, 76 might output more damage, Ash has got better kill potential. So has McCree and obviously so has Widowmaker. They can remove people from the game straight away. Whereas soldiers in the fight spamming loads of damage in, which might not be getting the kills. I mean, I get this a lot as a soldier player where, you know, I, in fact, I had a game on uh, Iconvolve uh, the other day, actually, this was. And I'm going in. Uh, we, di we didn't actually manage to secure the first point, but I'm going in and every single first point fight, uh, we're getting loads of damage. Well, I'm doing loads of damage. People are getting super low, but they're not dying. And that's a problem. So it means I need to change my hero. I think I ended up playing Hanzo. Uh, to try and uh, make that work, but it didn't work, but whatever. That's because people just get tilted, because if you lose the first few, like, two or three fights, it's like, the game's terrible, we can't win. What I'm going to say now, though, is... Why? Again, this is another issue I'm seeing a lot with players. Why have we now swapped a soldier? Tracer was actually doing all right. Like, we were doing fine. And yeah, sure, we were playing against the Brick, which isn't ideal, but we were still doing okay. And I think, especially at plat level... Tracer gives the enemy team a massive problem. Because if they don't deal with it, they, they often overreact to Tracers. But what I will say is you have not really been in their back line. If you were in their back line more, I think it would have caused them more issues. Uh, and definitely more cause for concern, which it kind of really didn't. Um, but you were still playing okay, right? All right, Soldier's okay on this point as well. I mean, I I play Soldier. Probably I, well, Now I probably would play Echo. Uh, and maybe a bit of Hanzo instead of a Soldier. I know they're not hit scan, but... Echo is just so powerful right now, and uh, yeah. All right, so we're going to go up and take the high ground. We're chilling, we're waiting. And yep, we've identified where they're going. Okay. Right. So I'm looking for target priority here. Excellent. So ball was 100% the target. 
Hmm, okay. Yep, break, 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 break. Hog, hook down, pressure him. Hooks down, we pressure him. Like, look, we'll, we will get so much. Mm. Okay. Okay, so we do get him in the end. Now, the only the reason why I paused there is like I would have just literally chased the hog because again it just, it just comes back to reading these symbol uh, signals. It's so simple, right? Look at hog. So here we're all in the corner here. I mean, it, it's lucky the enemy team doesn't really have anything to sort of spam into us as there'd be problems. But yeah, the enemy team are walking around the side. They don't really. There's not really any damage here, right? So what have they got chilling? Well, they've got the soldier. They've got the the Batiste. But these guys are not really going to be putting loads of range damage into us here, really. Nothing that we can kind of negate. But the thing is, we, we identify the brig. She's in a bad position. She dies. But this is the point I want to highlight, right? This, this is the hog. So as hog comes in, he throws his hook. This now just means, oh, let's just go on him. Because he's going to have to land absolutely peachy shots on us to kill us, right? So it's going to be very unlikely we're going to die. And the rest of our team are here. So we just go on him. Like, I literally would just chase this bad boy hog down. Look at him. Oh, oh no, he's healed. But we don't care. There's so much ult charge here. Everybody is on this guy. He's going to die. I just would run after him. And just mow him down. But we do decide to move away. I mean, it's not inherently super bad. Because let's be honest. He's on his own. He's still going to die. Now the question becomes. What position are we going to take up? Every time we win a fight. As a team. We've got. Uh, there's a, there's a, a period of, of downtime. But it isn't downtime. Everybody gets confused with this. And they're like. Oh my god. We've just won a fight. Congratulations. Pat each other on the back. No. Get into a position. To start harassing the enemy. Start poking them. In fact, this is what I would do if I was you, right? I'd, I'd run here, right? I'd look around here. I'd see this guy and I'd start shooting him, right? Provided he's not point blank range, I'm, I'm not frightened of him. He's not going to kill me, right? So I'm just going to pump damage into him. And I'm just going to chill. I'm literally just going to stay here. I'm going to keep looking around the corner here. And as soon as I see their team in this choke here, I'm going to leg it. I'm just going to run back to the high ground and I'm going to chill with the Torb turret. That's all I'm going to do. So what do you do? Let's have a look. So that ball is in. He's out. Okay. We're, we're looking. Okay. Ball. A little bit too close. Nice. Very nice. Unlucky. Okay. So let's just reassess what happened here. Because while I said, yeah, I'd run forward. Obviously, the enemy team are on the right-hand side. So we need to be aware of what they're doing. And we need to be aware of our position relative to that enemy team. So here we are, right? I'd have gone for So my, my argument is I'd have gone forward at this point And just started spamming damage into there. So I... Okay. So it is still kind of valid. So in my gameplay flow in my head, I'm here and I, I'm running now. I'd be here. And I'd start doing damage. So there wouldn't actually be. Yeah, he wouldn't be as close to us as we are. So the thing is, though, ball is rolling around. So now we are sort of overextended and are out of position. So it is still kind of risky what I was su suggesting to do, where we could have just maintained our position here. Again, sort of playing off the fact that the enemy team is, yeah, it's a ball. Ball might be able to close range on us fast. We don't want to get hit with the ball. Um, the problem here, though, is it's, a, it's, it's great. This is like really good. Nice little bit of combo from Soldier. We take this guy out. And then, I believe, a vault. Let's see what he does. It must be headshot. Yeah, so it's, he just blows our brains out and kills us. Although, I'm still worried because I think Ball is still going to take us out there. So, yeah, the, the, the safe maneuver there was to just maintain on the high ground. Now, while you're coming back, there are some positions you can access with Soldier. So, you can get onto here. So, you can rocket jump onto this high ground. And actually, it's pretty nice here. As you can see, you can use this for cover. You can duck in, duck out. Of course, you've got to be aware here that enemy players might push through there. Especially as they've got a Reaper, because Reaper could teleport behind you, and obviously that's going to be a problem. Although I will say this, since the game updated, um, with the uh, they did a pass on the sound effects. The the footsteps are super loud now, so you can generally hear when people uh, move around. So we're going to have ultimate available now. And again, it's dead simple. Your alt usage here is super simple. Great point for a Soldier 76. You can effectively use it right now. Um, you could use it if somehow you could control this high ground, but we're not going to. But it's totally fine to just pop your ult and just hammer it across the point. We've still got control of the point, and it's going to push them off the point. Our Torb's investing his ult. Yeah, but I don't really care. Like, I would be looking, honestly, to just straight up go in with my ult here. Yeah. Be aware, though, that somebody's close to you. Like, you know he's there. So there's... Okay, we shouldn't die here to this guy. We're lucky because Torb saved us. But we should never have ever been in that position because we knew he was there. Oh. This is a 1v1 we can take. Let's go. Okay. Fine. We can still take this 1v1. Okay. So why didn't we take that 1v1? So this again is another problem I've got. Um, with your target priority and, and this idea of securing kills. Now we've lost this fight. But you could still have taken... You could still take... Okay, look at this, right? You could still take this guy on and win. Yeah, we've lost the fight, right? Let's slow this down. 
Everybody's dead, right? We're losing control of the point. They're capping the point. You know, our two guys in there are probably dead, whatever. But this here is go time for us. So look at what we've done. We have invested our rockets into it. Done a little bit of damage to him. So we've even we got the advantage, basically, right? Yeah, okay, he could fire rockets back into us. But look, he's low. We go on this guy. We go on him and kill him. And then we look to try and get out. Now, it's still going to be risky because they're going to cap the point and ball is going to come after us. But what happens here is we just leave this guy. We know he's there. We absolutely know he's there. And look, we go over here and we start shooting at ball. Okay, is ball really the major threat here at the moment? Not really. Is ball really going to be able to instantly kill our Lucio? Not really. Okay, the fact that they've got their Batiste down there obviously is not great for us. Azari is running back to the point. But this here is not the target. We should not be firing at this ball. We need to kill this soldier. It's a 1v1 we should be taking. Because if again, if we can if we can win, then that's just going to be huge for us. Like That is such a massive pick. Instead, we get completely blindsided by this guy when we shouldn't have been. Because we know he's there. Hits us with a helix rocket. Runs at us and just mows us down. That's bad play. We have been completely outplayed there when we shouldn't have been. Because we knew where he was. We had the advantage. We had the... We were the aggressors. You know, I always say, I don't know, with Overwatch, it's easy to be aggressive and learn to be less aggressive over time. That was a moment where we should have just went in on that guy and asserted dominance on him and destroyed him. Again, it comes back to the idea of effective damage. Because even though we done damage to that guy, he didn't die. He's not dead. He killed us. So it doesn't matter if we did a billion damage in the game. If we're not securing kills, then it really doesn't matter. Again, with, like, firing at Hog there. Like, Hog don't care. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. So, right decision there to get out. It was getting hairy. Balls in our face. Not looking particularly the best for our team. This is fine. We just shoot him. Whatever. Whatever. Careful hook from Hog. Okay, good kill. Good flashbang of Amakree. Okay. So, is Hog the target here? Is Hog the target? Hog is not the target here. Why are we shooting Hog? This is like, so even though we're doing 20,000 damage, it's literally absolutely pointless. All this is doing is, I mean, look at look, look at what is happening in front of you, right? Amakree is dead. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Amakree is dead, but we're actually shooting this guy. So it shows you how much Hog literally gives no crap about what you're doing to him. He's just like, whatever, mate. You keep shooting me. I don't care. Like, I literally don't care. Why are we not shooting the brick? Like, everything should have been invested into killing this brick. We're at range. All right, we're not doing maximum damage, but it doesn't matter. Like, she's taking damage from other sources. Okay, she's using rally now, but whatever. That's the target there, not the tank. The tank is just not, especially when it's a, a, a hog. I mean, he's just going to, look, look, he kills Amakree. What are we doing? Okay, we're going to get our ult online. Is he, he's not even going to die. Look, he runs away. So all we get out of that is our ultimate, but we lose two of our players. And hmm. I mean, you couldn't have stopped the, the McCree being killed. No, let's be real there. We need to be super. So we need to be super careful here because we've lost this fight, um, and our position is just horrifically bad. So you, again, you have to keep thinking about this moment-to-moment -moment decision making. Where do I need to be? Where should I be? That's a better question to ask. Because should I be here while two of our members are, are dead and a, and a third teammate has just died and they're respawning back at base? So Moira, I mean, we've got Moira McCree and Lucio are back in spawn. We are here. Imagine if this was flipped the other side and you're this soldier. What are you thinking? You're like, well, we've won this fight. Well, well I know there's soldiers there, so I'm just going to go on him. I mean, the ball is already going on him, right? So I, this again is going to be, you need to get the hell out of town because if you stay here, you're just going to die. And do you get out of town? No, you get annihilated because all well, three of these guys just absolutely rushed onto you and destroyed you um, because obviously Batiste was firing some heals in. We should not have died there. I mean, let's just go back. You'll see how stupid this is. We should not have died here, right? Look at this. Let's play it in real time. Why are we still here? All right? Watch this. Watch this. Okay, now, this is where we get out. So we've lost this fight. We can't stay here. We know where he is. We take this guy 1v1 a little bit at range. We're not going to kill him. We're firing a bit into the... We've overstayed our welcome, right? Suddenly, ball gets wind of like, ah, oh, yeah, there's a soldier over there. Their soldier knows you're over there. Everyone knows you're over here. we got tunnel vision. We get dead. This now is a really, really, really bad death because we're staggering ourselves even more. So look where our team are. Our two tanks are here. We're DPS here, a support here, another support respawning. We're going to lose these two guys if they keep pushing, which means... Uh, no, they've, they've they've seen the light and backed out. Yeah, so good play off those guys. Maybe. They need to keep pushing out. Um, 
Okay, yeah, so good play by those guys. Because those tanks could have gone in and died, and that would have staggered our next push even more. And probably means that we are now in last fight territory. Uh, we've still probably got two fights left here now. So, okay. Again, look for things that are happening. Hook is down, so this means we can't be hooked. So, we know we can go on Hog if he's close to us. But we've also got to be... Nice. So, he was obviously waiting with, for his ult. Oh, no, he doesn't have his ult. Okay, I don't know what he was doing. But nice off McCree. Quick flashbang takes him out. Consider taking the high ground and just going straight in. Okay. So, so here, this is... I'm, I'm worried. I'm super worried with this. Because Hog can kill us here. And, and, it's, and it's kind of embarrassing. And Hog's probably going to be looking straight at us. In fact, we're, I'm going to jump on board with Hog uh, in a second so we get to see it from his perspective. Because if he hooks us, we're dead. So why are we using our ultimate here? So number one, we're exposed to Hog Hook. And we're also running forward to him, which is kind of mad. Why are we not over here helping our ball? Why are we not running up onto this high ground here, right? So we're away from this Hog. And we are just drilling the targets that are being hit with our ball. I mean, our ball here, it's 2v1. He might kill the soldier, but it's a bit risky. But if we engage with him, it will be much better for us. And then we could just tack Visor from the high ground. Of course, we've always got to be aware of Hook, because Hook can still get you if you're sort of chilling here as well. Anyway, let's take a look at this from Hog's point of view, because Hog should be looking to hook you. Okay, I'm not sure what Hog was doing, but uh, whatever. He should have gone for the hook on you, but he kind of got confused. We sh Ooh, ball's good enough. Yep. Ball is always a difficult one for a uh, soldier to fight. So if you've got your bio field and you chuck that on the floor, you can take him, right? But Ball will just run away. And this is always the problem with Ball. He'll just run away. Soldier versus Ball is very much about just... It, it, it's essentially you do damage to him to sort of make him run away. If Ball dies to you, it's because he's bad. Like, he really shouldn't be going in on Soldier. If he's low health, uh, that's if Ball is low health, because he's going to really suffer. Um, ball versus Soldier, yeah, it's always a problem. Um, but again, like, Ball isn't your primary target. But what I would say in that last phase, I mean, I'm, I'm happy you've done this, but in the last phase, you could have just stayed as Tracer, and it might have been more annoying to the enemy team to deal with. Because your Soldier play was not great. You, a lot of your target priority was completely wrong. We're fixated with the Roadhog. And I don't really know why. Um, it wasn't really getting us any results. I mean, yeah, sure, it was getting us ultimate charge, but it's also giving him ult charge, giving his support ult charge as well if they decide to heal him. All right, then. So, Tracer, so this time I want to focus more on um, approach angles. I want you approaching from the flanks more. It's, Tracer is simple, right? Just get in from the flanks, get in, harass him, do what you can. This is fine. But we're... So... I said this is fine. If you were chilling here on the low ground, firing at them cool, we can get away. We can also kind of keep our eyes on anything that comes through this, which, yeah, okay, the, the Zarya comes through it, which we can take We can take Zarya. Like, Zarya is a 1v1 target. You as a tracer, you've got to be thinking, you know what, I'm going to get me a bit of that. I don't mind it. Uh, however, we kind of find ourselves in the frontline position again. Like, we are... We may as well have just come through this way. You know what I'm saying? If we're just going to end up there in the frontline position. And then we get hooked by Hog. Because we're too close to where the fight is breaking out. We're not abusing the flanks. We should not have died there. That is a bad death. That's a really, really bad death. And we lose this fight now. I mean, we're three players down. Okay. So, we're just waiting to regroup here. There's not much we can do. We need to wait for our team to aggress. And then we go in. So what we don't want to do, like this guy, we don't want to take a 1v1 with him when he's got a hook available. Now he's got a hook down, that's fine, right? And you've identified that, it's cool. But the soldier's above. Now he's healing. Like It's going to be difficult to kill him. Remember, hook's going to be coming off full down. Uh-oh, I'm worried. I'm worried here. I'm like, I'm really worried that you're again on the road hog. Like, look, there are so many other targets here. So let's just go back and watch this from the overhead view. So... As you come in here, let's just go up into the sky and watch what happens here. So, we're on the Roadhog. All right, Roadhog heals. Now, at this point, when Roadhog's healing, I'd be like, all right, whatever, screw Roadhog, let's get out of here. Why are we not going around the edge? And the reason why I'm getting out of there is because I don't want to take a close-range 1v1 with Roadhog after he's... So, firstly, he's through his hook, right? Now, let's look at the cooldown on hook. So, he's through hook. Where is he? Yeah, he threw hook. Then he healed. 
He's going to have Hook available. I mean, we can see that's one second. But you, 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 I know this through playing loads of Overwatch. You know this as well. That he's going to have Hook available. So we don't want to be close to him. Because if he hooks us, we're absolutely dead. So. What? Why is there sound? Okay, great. <laughs> what was that? Um, it's so buggy, this replay viewer is now. What have you done, Blitz? Anyway, this is the time. This is go time, but not go time. I'm going to do damage. This is go time. I'm getting the hell out of Dodge because I'm going to get the hell around here now. Because Hog can't chase us. He's too slow. Like, we could just be like, right, whatever, I'm out of here. Then you can start getting into this position. And when you're here, you can then look at other areas and think, oh, there's a Batiste. That would be a really juicy target for me to harass. There's a Brick. Now, okay, Brick's a juicy target for us to harass, but we've got to be careful. Because if she bashes us at close range, that's bad news for us. But we can still attack her from range. But she wouldn't be the primary target. This guy is. Okay, there's a soldier up there. But if we're here in the back line, we don't even need to be killing them. We just need to be harassing them he, this guy isn't healing brig might start chasing us i mean it's going to give us a, a good opportunity to get in there as a team because our team are actually in a nice position here to just get the hell in there and do damage so as we go back up here watch your movement in fact i can turn on the overlays can't i there we go actually super cool so look at you right you're moving around the side then we're going to go back to this hog it, it's not the play then we end up rewinding so imagine if you were over here imagine if you as a tracer were here and you're harassing them from the back line here Remember, look at our supports, right? It's still going to be difficult for them to actually give us effective healing. Mercy would have to dive on top of us to heal us. Anna, yeah, she might be able to heal us, but she's keeping the front the front um, line alive, like our, tank, our Reinhardt and, and whatnot. We don't, we don't need to worry about support. Our healing is health packs and our healing is rewind. But if we're here, we can suddenly do all kinds of stuff. We could go on Pog. <laughs> we could go on uh, the Brig. There's a lot of stuff we could do. But instead, what we're doing is we're just chilling straight on the front line. And as we know, we're about to get killed, which isn't great hang on do we get killed i'm off my face why am i saying we get killed when we don't we will win the fight <laughs> no we do get killed don't we don't we get killed by the hog <laughs> no i'm off my head what the hell am i saying yeah we die actually no we don't we do we, we're fine but you see what i'm saying right these different approach angles these different attack vectors for tracer it's it's so much more effective when you use her as a flanking hero because that's what she is why does she keep putting us back in the spawn what's going on blitz all right, cool. In fact, you know what? I'm going to leave this. I'm going to leave this on. This should just be left on so we can see where everyone is. I don't know why I haven't been using that. I apologize, ladies and gentlemen. I'm an absolute idiot. Okay, so this is another downtime. This is a let's set up. Let's try and harass them. Let's try and poke them. Is this the best place to be chilling to poke them? We know they're either going to come from one or two positions. They're going to come from this door or they're going to come from here, right? Very unlikely the whole team comes from in here, isn't it? We uh, when I get that yeah very unlikely they're gonna go around here but you could be here couldn't you you could be like Woo doing a little i'm a little look see you could maybe fire them at range you're not gonna do much damage we might get a bit of ult charge but you're chilling you're giving yourself intel you could relay this intel back to your team if you wanted to but it still kind of doesn't matter because if i'm here i'm looking at where they are and i'm like waiting for them to push in mm, nice sort of our hands though and then we're just chilling and we're like yeah 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 yeah. oh look soldier i'd see him i know he was there Look at this. Look at this. I know he's moving around. What would I do now? Oh, <laughs> hello, Hanzo. But if I'm you and I'm Tracer and I'm here, I'm going in on this guy and it's another 1v1. This is the problem I've got with your Tracer play. You're not having enough of these 1v1s. I'll take a soldier 1v1 all day. If he kills me, whatever. Hats off to the man. But we can fight him. He drops a biofield. We can disengage. We can grab this health. There's a lot we can do. And we're just not doing it. See, because look where we are. Can you see how mad it is? Like, what the hell? Why are we here? Why are we actually here on the front line? I mean, that's, that's that's lucky that we didn't get a hook there. We're eating loads of damage. Oh, look, there's Soldier. But we could have been on him much earlier. Oh, no, there's Hog. But we could have... We, there was an opportunity there if our positioning was completely different for a straight-up 1v1 with Soldier, and we might have killed him. Right then, again, another issue. Why are we here? Why are we blinking into this front line to take them on? It's just madness. We were actually in a good position on the side here. We can go on these guys. All right. Okay. He's using that. That's not great. We need. We do need to hide from that. You're going to do it, aren't you? You're going to pull spawn big man? I wouldn't even bother. Oh. Thank you. You didn't pull spawn me. I'm happy about that, though. Because, like, obviously that fight's won. We don't need to use it. Now, what do we do? What do we look to do as Tracer? What would every... Top tier ladder warrior tracer start doing now. Beyond clearing up this Zarya when we see her and, and this other guy. I mean, we let's let's go. Let's go on these guys. Let's go on them. 
Get your ass in here and go on them. Thank you. Thank you. Nice. 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 That's actually really unlucky because it was a nice reaction off uh, Batiste. And then she walked out of it. Unlucky. Um, okay. Good. Good, good, good. So what I was going to say is our the play with the pulse bomb is to try and either stagger them or get a kill as they look to engage. And to do that, we need to be set up on the flank, ready to go. Don't die. But it's okay, because we used our pulse bomb there. We killed the Zarya. It's fine. This delays their push. Totally fine. The worst thing to do is tracer, especially when you've got pulse bomb available, is to just chill on the point or just to just chill in general with the team. Or, you know, not, not in like a... Whoa, wow, 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 wow. This is super risky. I don't want you. Do I don't want you blinking front line into the tanks because that all that hog's got to do. Like if that hog had a brain cell, right? He'd just be like, "Okay, I'm, this tracer just blinks on me all the time. I'm just gonna wait, man. I'm gonna get her with a hook. Then she's gonna have to rewind out or I kill it." Okay, that's interesting. I don't know why you're not getting close to it to kill her. Okay, fine. First melee. I think I've seen you do. So he's... So I'm... Ugh. So in that fight, you could argue that, yeah, okay, Hog, it, it was worth attacking Hog there. Because he was purple, he couldn't heal, we could have killed him. And we did kill him. But you are fixating way too much on these tanks when we should be using our high burst damage to wreck their DPS or wreck their support. We need to not frontline this, we need to get the hell out. You know, and again, like, we don't have to blink straight in. You know that you can access this, right, as Tracer? I'm sure you do. I, you, you must know this. So Tracer, you could just come here, blink it. I mean, it's it's built for Tracer. Let's just put this here for Tracer and Genji. This is an OG map. It's Nepal. Because they want you to flank, right? They want this here so you can be like, oh, I'm in a cheeky flank position. And in I go. And I can start having a look, seeing what's going on. I can use my mobility to keep myself alive. As soon as my team engage, then I can pick a target and take it out. If I find an opportune target, which is miles away from the team, then yeah, I can take them out. But instead, look at this. We're in. Like, why are we in? We're going to have to recall. Makes no sense, right? We just wasted one of our resources for no reason. We know hooks down. Okay. Throughout that grab, we did not shoot the brick. We were shooting the, the hog all the time. Why? Like, forget hog. Kill the support. Kill their DPS. Kill hog if he's like low HP, but well, you're just not going to kill him there. Watch this. Let's slow it down, right? This grab is going to come in, and as soon as this grab comes in, you, your target needs to adapt from the tank to the support that's in it. Look at this here. Get in there. Kill the immortality field. Unless one of our... Where even is the immortality field? Oh, it's dead. <laughs> oh, it's like, well, where is it? It's dead. I look at the kill feed. Why are we not in here killing this brig? Look at brig. We could have smoked brig with our primary fire and then yeeted in our bomb. But look at what we're doing. Like, we went to look at it, then we started firing at Hog a bit. And then we're like, ooh, I'm going to throw a bomb. Hands on Hoggy, don't care. He just stands there. He's like, whatever. <laughs> I know you're looking for the combo there. I know it's this Graviton Surge. I'm going to throw my Pulse Bomb into it. That's fine. But the target priority there was to kill the Brick. And this is what I'm seeing consistently with your gameplay, is we're not targeting the right targets, which is reducing our overall value, which means we're not getting much value, even though on paper... We're doing massive, incredible amounts of damage. It's all to a Roadhog who is just healing himself up. Goodbye. Mm, super frustrating. And this is getting risky now because we're losing fights here and we're losing them. Oh, Doomfist's in the game. <laughs> oh, he's on our team. We might win that. <laughs> oh, their Doomfist is one I could hear. Mm, it's still back and forth, but it's still in favor of the enemy team. And the danger here is without a proper regroup, it's just going to end because it's just piecemeal, this fight. So this this is a moment now where we need to just pop off like crazy. And it's going to be difficult because we're going into the whole enemy team. But our Roadhog's in. Our, our, our Doomfist's in, so it might actually be enough. Which it looks like it is, actually. Mm, 
Lucky, lucky. So that one Doomfist swap, although their Doomfist is in there. <laughs> this is the thing with Doomfist, right? I always say, like, just grab Doomfist. If it's overtime, especially on, like, uh, 2 CP, just get a Doomfist. Because this is horrible. Like, he comes in and he just gets kill after kill after kill. So much value. Like, when people are not ready for it. Yeah, oh dear, this is going to be interesting. No, like, why are we on the hog? The Doomfist was a... Oh, this is frustrating. The Doomfist was a target there. I mean, I know we've lost this game, but look at the Doomfist. Watch it as he comes in. So why didn't we just go on the Doomfist, right? He was, he was. I'm pretty sure he was like under 25% HP. Ball was super lucky on their team there. Right, so Ball gets away. We decide to leave him, fine. Come back for the Brig. Add kill, kill. Okay. Right, let's slow this down. Okay, so maybe he wasn't 25% HP. Maybe I'm off my head. But here we go. We're pumping damage into their um, Doomfist. Look at him. He's scared of us, right? He's he's honestly scared of us, this guy. Ball is 1 HP as well. But you can see here, like, when you pause this and you look at the... Look, like, if you were to prioritize these targets, what are the priority here? Well, probably Ball is main priority because he's low HP, right? Doomfist is number two, but I still don't mind it if you just went on the Doomfist. But the lowest priority is the Hog. We can't kill the Hog. Like, we need to remove players from the point. It's not going to happen with Hog. Because we're just not going to kill him. So our Reinhardt's in there on his own. You know, it's going to be bad news for him. Uh, ball, again, like, like, literally Ball comes straight past us there. Yeah, so this is where I'm getting onto him, like, saying he's 25% HP. He's not, but imagine the damage you could have done to that Doomfist if you emptied a clip into him. And then emptied this clip into him. I think he's probably dead. Now, I don't think it matters. Because there's attack visor and soldier just about to run onto the point. This has been a really interesting game, this has. Because you're a good player. But this is why you're plat. Because we are just shooting the wrong thing. We're obsessed with tanks. We're obsessed with frontlining. We never flank. I don't know what that means, McCree. Hello. In the, uh, in the, in the first... On the first point, we were actually pretty solid. Um... We should have took a few more 1v1s. Second point, we went to Soldier. You know, okay, that's fine. Um, almost worked out, but it didn't. Third point, we're back to Tracer. And again, just suffering from wrong positioning, frontlining too much. Yeah. Ability cooldown management. Again, we're, we're burning stuff like um, recall when we were going in on the point and stuff like that. Like, we're just blinking straight at them, then recalling out. Ah, a lot of stuff. Kind of a frustrating game. But I do think you're, you, you are a good player. Basically solve the issues that we've highlighted in this video and I think you'll be good. And the same goes for all of you guys watching this. If you want to go up the ranks in DPS, this is what you need to do. You need to have effective targeting. You need to kill people. It's alright doing loads of damage, but if it's not killing people, it just isn't... It's pointless damaging them, right? But I still think if this guy spent more time attacking squishier targets, it would have been way better than just trying to kill the hog all match. Alright guys, thank you for watching this. If you'd like to send a video clip in for consideration to appear on Overanalyze, then go to unitloss.com forward slash overanalyzed or click the link in the video description below and you may have a chance of appearing on this wonderful show and as ever guys thank you for all the continued support you've been giving me it's been awesome and i love you for it <laughs> all right guys catch you on the next one do leave